Hey, I wanted to share this guest interview I did talking about food for your mood. I actually just presented this workshop live in Phoenix, and if you're interested in the virtual experience, check out the link below. Cheers. Welcome to another episode of the Recharge Podcast, and today I'm bringing on a very special guest. This is Dr. Laura, and uh, a little bit about her. She's a plant-based chef, former dentist, professional speaker. Boston Marathoner, life coach, and entrepreneur. Welcome, Dr. Laura. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. So we're wrapping up 2021, and this has been a hell of a year for a lot of us, and uh, looking forward to uh, hopefully a better 2022. And, uh, you know, we're, we're recording this um, as the year wraps up, and a lot of people utilize a variety of substances to try to impact or affect their mood, which often has uh, not so positive consequences. And I know that you are a bit of an expert on uh, food for mood. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means and, and what the gut brain connection is? Yeah, you know, it's just so simple that you can actually choose food to enhance your mood. And just as opposed to certain foods that maybe bring your mood down, which a lot of people go to. My dog is going crazy right now, so sorry. A lot of people go to their, they gravitate towards those sugary, salty, carbohydrate things when they're feeling kind of down. And it just is like a vicious cycle. Then it, they feel a little worse and they crave that a little more. So they eat a little more of it. And so I just started really thinking about what could I do that would actually enhance my mood? What foods could I pick that would pick me up? and give me a boost instead of dragging me down. So I really started digging into it. And a lot of them are super delicious, easy to get, um, and, and not hard to find. So I, don't, I, I think it's just one of those things that you can implement easily into your everyday life. So when you're hungry, what, what is your like go-to snack or thing that you'll reach for? So when I'm hungry, my go-to snack is a, what I call a brain boosting nut mix. And, um, I, I have a, a few samples here of things that are just super easy, but, um, pumpkin seeds is one of them. I, I mix pumpkin seeds, almonds, walnuts, and dark chocolate covered almonds. And all of those nuts have incredible value. Pumpkin seeds are high in magnesium, which is a very calming, um, releases calming hormones in our body. So really good for us there. Um, high in fiber, pumpkin seeds are actually the most satiating seed, nut oh. seed. And so when you eat those, you are, you're full longer. In other words, that's a, kind of a hard word to say, but that's exactly what it means. <laughs> It's satiating. It keeps you full longer. Um, walnuts are full of um, uh, omega threes, the um, anti-inflammatory. They're full of fiber. Fiber good for your gut. Same with um, almonds. And then that dark chocolate actually is really good for us too. It, it opens the blood vessels to our brain and helps blood flow to our brain. Um, and actually releases a few endorphins too with the chocolate in it. So a really simple, just brain boosting nut mix to help you kind of get from, I'm starving, I want something to eat to, gosh, I feel good. And now I've released all these wonderful feel good hormones, chemicals, and I actually feel a little better. Well, what about uh, chocolate? I mean, is milk chocolate and dark chocolate, are they going to have the same effect? Like if I just throw in like some Hershey's Kisses or some M&Ms? Actually, no. The milk chocolate is actually a little bit inflammatory and can have some, um, some oils that are inflammatory. So going for dark chocolate is better. Uh, so look for those dark chocolate. Um, the higher the concentration of dark chocolate, the better. So what do you do when you travel? I mean, travel is so hard. I mean, with the, the stuff they pass out in the airplanes is, is usually uh, somewhat toxic and you get to the airport and uh, the choices there are very limited. I mean, is there something that you bring with when you, when you take trips? Yes. Yeah, so I always bring a little bit of my nut mix. I, I usually do not accept the, the snacks from the uh, flight attendants. Uh, I just usually get some water and, and have my own snacks. Uh, there's lots of great, like um, I found these, these little packets of snacks. These have the brain boosting their walnuts and um, 
pumpkin seeds and almonds in there. So nice little travel pack that you can get and travel with. Um, I also bring my own coffee, I guess, so to speak. So instead of coffee, I like to drink what we call mud water. It's a, um, I have no affiliation with them, but it's a wonderful uh, blend of black tea, uh, chai tea, and then um, a bunch of functional mushrooms to help boost your mood, boost your focus. Um, it doesn't have a lot of caffeine, so it's not going to give you those jitters and dehydrate you. And they actually come with travel packs now too. So that's pretty handy. Oh. That's super cool. Yeah, I think a lot of people will reach for the fifth cup of coffee and uh, end up feeling a little jittery. And, and I think many people forget that that uh, the a stimulant in, in a coffee, the caffeine is actually a diuretic. And particularly if you're traveling, you tend to be a little dehydrated already and it just accelerates the problems. Uh, what other sort of foods do you think are helpful for moods, particularly as we get through the holiday season and many of us are going to go into a little bit of a winter blah type phase? Awesome. Oh, well, it's super easy to just add a few things to some of your most common uh, snacks. For instance, salsa. Salsa is really actually pretty healthy for you. But if you can add pineapple to it, pineapple is high in tryptophan, which then converts to serotonin, which calms you down, evens your mood, makes you feel um, happy and good. Um, pineapple is one of the things that I try to always eat before I speak because it calms me down. So I'll, I'll be one of those someday when I'm um, a famous diva, that's what I'll ask for in my dressing room. <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> but um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Whatever works. Right. I might take a I might take a glass of uh, red flavonoids, better known as wine. <laughs> oh yes. Well, um, but just adding, you know, that to your salsa or even picking a salsa with pineapple instead of uh, regular chips, you could pick sweet potato chips. Sweet potatoes have lots of vitamins, minerals, fiber. And so that's just, you know, a simple way to enhance a regular chips and salsa snack. Um, you know, maybe foregoing the, the inflammatory sour cream, avocados, avocados, super good satiating fats, um, good for your brain. So making a cream with avocados and coconut milk and a little bit of cilantro, sea salt, spices, that type of thing for dipping with your chips. Just when you say make a cream, how do you, how do you make a cream out of an avocado? So you just throw in avocado and some um, coconut milk into a blender with your, you know, maybe a little garlic, sea salt, um, cilantro, blend it up and it, and it makes a delicious cream. So you can forgo the inflammatory sour cream that, that uh, is coming from the dairy. Sounds delicious. So what about sleep? I mean, traveling across time zones is difficult and this, this whole travel thing often messes up sleep. Do you have any suggestions for, for foods or supplements regarding sleep? Yes. So anything with magnesium. So like I talked about with pumpkin seeds are really good, high in magnesium, um, lots of different uh, options there help enhance that kind of calm, bring you uh, more sleeping. Also too, anything high in fiber is going to be good for your gut and take a little bit longer to digest so that you are full longer. So for instance, if you eat dinner and you eat something high in fiber that is takes longer to digest and keeps you full, you'll forego maybe needing that snack before bed. And snacking before bed is one of the ways that um, you can really deplete your sleep because what happens when you snack before bed is your body goes into digestion mode and really doesn't go into recovery and sleep mode uh, as early in the evening as it should. I think a lot of people um, wake up and don't feel as well as they think they should or hope they would. And I know you use a device to track your sleep. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and, and uh, what it looks like? Yeah, so I have an um, aura ring here. And this is, I love the data that it gives me because it really tells me exactly what I did at night. If I was awake, if I um, didn't go into deep sleep or REM sleep, it tracks how many hours I actually slept. A lot of people think they go to bed and then they start their time there. Like you go to bed at nine and you wake up at six, but 
actually, maybe you went into bed and you read for an hour. And so you actually really didn't go to sleep till 10. So anyway, the aura tracks all of that, or if you're awake in the night. And uh, so it gives you data that you can use. For instance, if I have a, a poor night of sleep, I'll think back to the night before and say, well, what did I do? What, what did I do setting myself up to sleep? Did I have a late night snack? Did I get on my phone and blow up my brain with Instagram right before bed? Um, what, what did I do so that the next night I can say, okay, I need to modify so that I do get a really good night's sleep. And um, that can be uh, really important because without sleep, you're going to crave those, again, those unhealthier foods more likely. Uh, and it's just kind of this snowball perpetuating cycle. So other than a, like a poor sleep number, would there be any other data that your ring would tell you that uh, would kind of sort of tip off the fact that maybe you had some some chips or some pizza before bed? Yeah, so that it does heart rate variability, which um, I guess I don't know all the specific science. It's a little bit of a mystery to me. But when my heart rate variability is high, I tend to feel better. And when it's low, I tend to feel groggy and worse. So uh, typically on nights when I have a snack or I maybe uh, have a glass of wine while we're watching some Netflix um, or blow up my brain, my heart rate variability is much lower. Those have all been very helpful. I think one of the challenges that, that uh, many people face, uh, and it's probably more of a mental challenge, is how do you... How do you transition from the the pattern of you know gravitating towards chips or cookies or comfort food, uh, not only at home but particularly when you travel? You know, I know you're a plant based based chef, and so what do you what do you tell your your coaching clients in terms of you know trying to make it make a switch or make a change? Yeah, you know, it's like any habit really, and I think that um, once you start to feel good, you sort of get addicted to feeling good. And then when you have something that causes you to not feel good, you're like, wow, that really made me not feel good. I'm going to avoid that as much as possible. And so there's that. And then as you eat these foods that are good for you, good for your gut, good for your brain, um, it, your, your cravings change. You know, like if I, for instance, don't eat sugar for a long time, I stop craving it, which for me is a big one. I, I, you know, I used to really like to enjoy sugar all day, every day. <laughs> and as so, a dentist, as a former I, dentist, that's yeah. interesting to hear. <laughs> you know, I've always said, if there's ever a candy shortage, just go to the dental office, you'll find some, but um, <laughs> yeah. So, but once I stopped eating it once, you know, I get on these, these foods that are actually good for me, good for my gut. It's like something switched, something changed. And, um, I just started craving more of the good stuff. So I, I will tell my clients, I will just say, um, just stick to it, stick to it. And the transformation will happen where you just start craving these really good for you foods because you're getting the dopamine hits, you're getting the serotonin hits. You're actually with your brain, you're actually reinforcing the good habits of these foods. I think for a lot of people, just starting is the first step. And then also like a, um, uh, a bit of self-care and forgiveness, realizing that you are going to probably fall off the wagon and there are going to be nights where you revert back to your normal stuff. And I think, uh, you know, implementing some of the tips that you shared sort of gives a new baseline for comparison. Like, oh, I, you know, I had those those chips last night and now I don't feel so good this morning. I didn't sleep as well as if I would have just, you know, had some water, had some some uh, non-caffeinated mud water, as you suggested, or something something along those lines. That's all very cool and helpful stuff, particularly as people are pushing into 2022 and trying to make resolutions or life changes or, you know, map out a different uh, year for themselves. So that's been very helpful. Uh, besides Instagram and all the usual places, is there somebody somewhere else people could learn about uh, what you're doing? I know that you teach a, a live course and, and it's also available on demand. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So you can find me at lauraschwint.com and uh, on there you can find my vegan vault. It's what it's called, the vegan vault, unlocking the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle. And I do virtual uh, workshops with that. So you can sign up for those on there. 
Um, and the one thing I want to mention is you do not have to be vegan to enjoy the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle. And so the workshop is for everybody. In fact, um, I'm giving it live next week, the first live event of the Vegan Vault. And one of the participants coming um, is so sweet. She said, I am 100% a meat eater and I can't wait, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but I think yeah. Most people, I think people get so confused when you talk about plant-based. I, th I can't think of anybody I know who likes, you know, their steak and potatoes and bacon or whatever that doesn't eat salad or cucumber or broccoli or things like that. So I think that's a valid point that you share that it's not an all or none phenomenon for most people on the planet. So very awesome. For those of you uh, uh, listening and not watching the video, we'll share the links below. Uh, you can find us on YouTube as well. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Have a fantastic uh, New Year's and uh, look forward to hearing more from you in 2022. Sounds good. Cheers. Uh, and don't forget to boost your mood with food. <laughs>